So grating is the flooring uh, used in industrial and, and plant projects um, and, and metal flooring and bars that are that are uh, transparent in nature and they're indicated in the drawings in this case by uh, small circles so if we take a look at, at what those little small circles look like in our drawing if we zoom on in we can see they're made up of little circles um, and a pattern pattern grid rotated 45 degrees to uh, to indicate that some of the key details of that is we need to make sure um, they are transparent in nature so we can see the steel members underneath um, the grating pattern however within the steel members themselves we don't want to see any of the flanges of the steel members so we need to isolate the transparency of the grating away from an overall uh, hidden line or transparency of the view. So we use materials and geometry maps to come up with that solution. So a little workflow we follow in order to use those geometry maps is we have a part and family which is used to uh, define uh, the material. Within that part and family, we can set the uh, the rendering material. So within the material editor itself, you'll see a button there called geometry. And within that, uh, we can create geometry maps. And we use a cell, a small circle cell, um, to, to apply on the surfaces of objects in the forward view. But in order to maintain that uh, transparency of that object within our cache visible edge view, we need to make sure it has some opacity. Because we have a transparency threshold of 30 by default in our display styles, we use a, an opacity less than that value. In this case, we use a, a, a value of 25. So let's run through that process of creating the cell, the part and family, and the material for use to indicate its grating. So let's start by having a look at the uh, cells dialog box. So in the search engine, I'm just going to type in cells and open up the, the cells dialog box. And um, first and foremost, we might zoom in here. Now, our, our cell is going to be a simple circle, just to maximize this a little. So what we'll do is grab our place circle tool. And for the purposes of this exercise, we'll just make that uh, opaque. Um, we will give our cell a diameter of 10 mil. In fact, if it's going to be 10 mil, we'll give it a diameter of, um, uh, we'll give it a radius of, of 5 mil. And we'll just click on the screen. We'll fit the screen there. Cool. So what we'll do is then create a, uh, a new cell library and for the purposes of this exercise let's just take a step back and have a look at our config and just have a look at where some of our cell um, variables are path to so if I type in cell we've got our MS cell variable there and we can see we have one that pointing to our workset standard cells library so let's place our our new cell library in there so we'll say new and we'll go standards and cell already there and we'll call this just grating okay so we can create our cells so what we want to do is to define the cell origin so i'm going to just type in origin here and one of my options is define cell origin and we can make that at the center of the cell and i'm just going to select the cell and you can see now that the create cell button appears let's give it a name grating cell one and because it's going to be used in a pattern let's change the cell type to point cell and then hit create so once that's done you can shut down the box and we can now look at going and create creating the um the material for our for our grating so it's available across either all our uh, pro uh, our project we're working in or 
uh, via our company standards. Let's have a look at uh, uh, configuration variable, which points to the folders which can contains um, material. So we'll, we'll look up a, a configuration variable called material, and we'll look at MS material. So these are the, the paths that are set um, in the, the default delivered workspace um, defining MS um, materials or, or our material location. So what we'll do is, for the purpose of this exercise, we'll, we'll look at our work set uh, material location, which is, is located here. So let's open up uh, a DGN lib that's contained in, in that folder. So we'll go to the standards folder, and we'll go to materials. And it's a DGN lib in here called project materials. So we'll just say open. So once in here, let's go and have a look at our uh, materials dialog box. So we can either browse that through visualization and go to the edit materials section, or we can type in uh, materials up here. So this is where we get the material edit that way. So this is where we can create um, some of our uh, custom materials that we want for uh, our, our projects. So you see here we've already created one called grating. So what we might do, just to start this process from scratch, so what we might do is uh, start here and create, right click on the, on the flooring and create one called new material. And we'll just call this grating one. So what we need to concentrate on in this area is a is the area in geometry maps. Geometry maps give us the ability to apply a pattern as a material to an object. So if we click on um, geometry, we see out here we have three buttons. Let's click on the three buttons and attach our cell library. And attach the cell that we create. Right, so here let's have a look at some some of the settings um, that we may want to create. So what we can do is fall back to our PowerPoint and have a look at uh, this, how the settings are laid out uh, on that page. So here are, are, are our settings down here. We've, we've, we're setting our units to master. Uh, now scales are one to one. Um, we have some uh, row spacing and some cell spacing. So some of this might be a little bit of trial and error, but let's have a have a look and, and look at some of these settings. We can also look at the previous grating that we, we used as well. Okay, so uh, we've got the previous grating up here. Let's have a spread this out a little bit. So yeah, it's master size uh, one, rotation of 45, and row and column spacing of 200. 200. So let's fill in those, those values. So we're going master, and they're doing one to one. We'll lock that. Uh, the rotation is 45 degrees, and we're doing a row and column spacing of 200 and 200. Okay, so let's um, shut down. We've got our geometry map in play. Now we mentioned some transparency values before, so let's head back to our spreadsheet and see what see what they're doing. So looking at the uh, transparency value here, uh, it's an opacity 25. Reason being, it's got to be less than the transparency threshold in our display styles, and, and, and all our display styles pretty much come default with a, a, tr a transparency threshold of, of 30. Anything above this will not be seen as transparent. So over here we have our transparency tab, and what we can do in here is give it a an opacity of uh, 25, or we can just type the value in there, just like so. Okay. So that's our uh, material there set up. So what we can do, it's in our library, so we're good to good to go. So let's let's run a bit of a test on uh, some files. But first of all, let's hook it up to a part and family, um, just so we're we're grabbing it from the part and family as opposed to having to attach a material at the time. 
Okay, so uh, in here what we can do is go up to our, our parts and families. And what we might do, we have a, a project part and family set up here. So, you know, typically this is project or work set. We have a workspace and we have what's delivered with the product. So expanding this a little further in the project XML. Let's, um, we've got one here for fencing. Let's create a, a new part. And we can, we'll just call it, well, no, we'll keep it a struggle. We'll just call it um, uh, grating. We'll hit, hit apply and um, and uh, leave it at that for the moment because what we want to do is focus on uh, the rendering properties area of our part and family. So let's turn the render toggle on and let's go and find our palette. So it's in flooring. That was grating one. Okay, so to have a look at that, let's. Um, Let's do something here. So what I'm going to do is use a normal parametric solid here on the modeling tools to create the grading. As you can see here, um, we don't have a part and family set as default. So if I right click down here, I can say set active and, and the um, part and family becomes active. What I should really do here is tidy up. I should really um, give this a new family called grating rather than putting it under fencing. And then I can move um, the grating into, let's cut that and paste it into to, to grating there. Better, better, um, better layout there of, um, of what it should be. So again, I can right click and say set active. So there we are, grating, grating. In fact, I might just quickly and then this to grating one. We may have multiple types. And it's not about you to have the description as well. Perfect. Okay, save that and shut it down. So then what we'll do is we can um, do a bit of parametric modeling. So this might be our, um, our slab and we can just extrude the, um, uh, the solid slightly. Um, and as we mentioned, we don't necessarily see uh, the grating in a dynamic view. So <clears throat> because of the transparency values and, and so forth. So let's just go to a a front view here and back to building design and up to drawing production. We'll grab ourselves a, um, a little floor plan like so and we'll just make it choose just a default uh, type of uh, drawing seed there and we'll just allow the uh, to create the drawing model in this current file. We'll just say open model, we don't need a sheet. Great, so here's our um, our solid with our geometry map on top. So let's make a few little more observations. So we'll um, head back to our uh, 3D model, and um, yeah, let's let's take a look at a couple of things here. So you recall we used the solid earlier. We used the uh, the we used the a shape and extruded profile. A couple of things you want to do here uh, in observation. So, uh, first of all, I might use um, one of the form tools, and I'll just set the the part and family here to uh, grating and grating. And what we'll do is we'll we'll just build a slab. Uh, its thickness could be um, the three hundred mil, two hundred mil. Sorry. And we'll just quickly draw this um, this slab like so. Beneath both slabs, what we'll do is place some structural members. So we will turn off the, the plane lock and we'll just pop them just underneath the slab. That under the slab there and then under that slab there and both of them we can copy a few times along the slab and same with the, this guy here we'll just copy it along a few times 
So what we're looking for here is firstly, um, within the the drawing view, the layout or the the, pa the pattern arrangement or differences between the two uh, solids and, and forms. And secondly, to make sure that we can see um, the beams underneath without uh, with the resymbolization of the beams themselves. So let's let's move to the drawing model again. And it will give itself a. Now, two things. You can see uh, the members themselves, which is great. You don't see the the webbing of the members. They're just uh, two bars. However, the form over here duplicates the pattern. And what we're seeing here is the pattern arrangement on the top face and the bottom face together. Now, with the solid. The start point and end point of the pattern is consistent on the top face and the bottom face, but with the form, it starts at different uh, ends of the face, and therefore you get this offset. So there's not much that can be done about this. Um, so the recommendation is to use solids when uh, creating your grating. And of course, you can assign a catalog uh, to those um, objects, so you're able to then see them in, in the scheduler and, and bills and materials and so forth. So just recapping that message there with the uh, grating. So the grating uh, material is transparent, uh, so we see the objects underneath. We, we don't use the uh, visible edges in the display styles, otherwise we see the... Um, uh, the visible edges of the, the beam members as well, like we're seeing right here where we're seeing the uh, the webbing. We tend to use solids over forms. Um, and the reason for that is that we can see that the patterning is being seen but, but both the top face of, of a form and the bottom face, whereas a solid, they, they the, the patterning starts uh, at the, the common point on, on both faces. So we go for the... Uh, the solid option in there and therefore in order to give that um, meaning and characteristics we can use add instance data um, to uh, give it um, some meaning and, and bills uh, and stuff that we can run bills and materials and quantities on as well. If you found this video helpful please give it a like. If you want to see more such series consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.